up right in the shape it's in the shape of a I want one that's sharper in the shape of a um that goes up this is one of my favorite rings I had another ring that was my favorite ring and I don't even know where it is but the the stone inside of the setting started to get loose well it cracked at some point not no I don't know when but then it got loose and as I still wore it but because it was loose, it made a certain noise. And I liked the noise that it made. And I don't know what happened to that ring. I remember getting that ring at um, Macy's, I think. I think I got a gift card from my job. And I bought that ring at Macy's. It was nice. It had a um, citrine. Was it a citrine? orange it might have been an amber I can't remember I need to find a picture of me wearing it I love that ring so much what's up everybody it's me Erica happy 88 Lionsgate portal and um and then you could do more research and decide if you want to use today um for the energies that are aligned today and you could use it to your advantage if you're a praying person this is a good day to pray get your prayers out write your prayers out journal them whatever you want to do your prayers hopes wishes desires what is this it's like a piece of something it's something so i'm gonna tell you what it is we're gonna um read lionsgate portal Today is August 8th, 2024, and 2024 also equals 8. So it's like 888. Eight, eight. It's good. It's considered by many spiritualists to be one of the most powerful dates of the year for manifestation, as the number 8 represents balance between the spiritual and physical world. So there you go. So during those time, I posted on my YouTube um, community page. Well, now it's just called Post, which is weird because I think community page was good. I need my lip gloss near me. I have it on, but it just reminded me like when it runs out, I'm going to need it near me. Hold on. All right. So I got my lip gloss near. We got everything. We got all of our tools around. All right, so the Lion's Gate portal, which peaks on August 8th, is a time believed to be powerful for spiritual awakening and manifestation. Here are some things that you can do to harness its energy. Meditation and visual, visualization, okay? Um, visualize what you want to manifest in your life, okay? Make sure that you're clear and specific with, with all requests because the universe knows the specifics and also we are in Mer mercury retrograde so communications in areas of communication that's why armand was going off yesterday i said "Ooh, mercury and he's a child of mercury i found out because he was giving me very much tupac energy and i was like is he a gemini and then somebody confirmed online that he's a gemini because the way he was going off and then he got emotional and started crying, I was like, okay, it was giving very much Pac energy. But make sure that you are clear and intentional because Mercury is in retrograde and communications tend to be compromised during the time of Mercury because Mercury is the planet of communication, all forms of communication, including electronic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, journaling, write down your goals. Again, it's also good, like manifestation, uh, meditation and visual visualization, but then also writing it out. So you have like all things going at once. You understand what I'm saying? So journaling, writing down goals and dreams, any things that you want to release, reflect on what you want to attract in your life. Also any rituals, if you want to light some candles, burn some sage, you can use crystals that are associated with lion's gate citrine uh selenite um you can set up a space and then like make it a whole thing you know what i'm saying light some candles clear the space sit down put some music on put your earbuds on play a manifestation you could just play in you could play um binary beats there's all kind of eight eight manifestation portal um 
energy um, music on YouTube. So you can go down there, listen to that, have a whole thing, put in music on that makes you feel good. So you can just draw on that energy. So it's, it's beautiful. All right. So YouTube, I put a link for a meditation. It's like, I think it's four hours, 44 minutes and 44 seconds, actually, which is actually pretty cool. And then I remind you to be specific because we are in Mercury um, retrograde. Okay. Um, so yeah, speaking of Armand, so happy A8 to all of y'all and hope all your wishes and dreams and manifestations are brought to brought forth into your space. Now let's get to the mess child. So Armand Wiggins was going off yesterday. So, well, we know that Funky Doniva did an interview with Carlos King in the interview. Of course, he asked about TGIF. He mentioned that he thought Armand was a good replacement. We all saw that he thought Armand was a good replacement for him. I thought Armand was a good replacement for him. Armand is, I think, to Funky Doniva's point, there's a level of maturity in terms of being able to speak on things um, that I feel like Armand just needs some more life experience maybe um, to speak on certain things. But I think his voice for the demographic was good. He's good, smile, big teeth, big white teeth. You know what I'm saying? He was good. He came on, looked nice all the time, um, was engaging with the people. He just has a natural ability. Um, and the way, and then, and then Funky Daniva, you know, said that he was disappointed. There's no way that you can come back from that roast that, Armand did, and he felt like Armand had something to do with the dissolution of the show. Um, and so, of course, it, Armand heard about it, and he actually watched it on his um, on his um, channel. The interview with Funky Danny Van Carlos was actually one of the best interviews I've seen Carlos King conduct, um, mostly because the subject is forthright and transparent. That always make when when somebody just speaks like ain't no hemming and hawing, talking in riddles, man. I, when I tell you, I have so much respect for people who don't fucking talk in riddles, who fucking say what the fuck what the fuck it is, right? Say, oh, I'm not gonna tell you that, or but Funky Doniva is just like always transparent, which is I think a part of his appeal, the authenticity of him whether you like him or not that can be polarizing somebody authentic can be polarizing because they are going to say what they want to say nobody's going to give them an opportunity nobody's going to ask them to change they, and when people ask a person who is authentic to change their how they deliver and how they show up it doesn't it never works out he's very um he, i feel like he's very transparent um, is he messy? Yes. We girl, what, what are we doing down here? We talking about the mess. We talking about the mess. Um, but I think that's just a part of the, the job. Um, but the interview was really good. Um, uh, his, the way that he spoke about, um, his father, we didn't know stuff about that. Um, I thought that was very interesting and how it was his mother that was actually the one that was a little like, you know, about his identity, sexual identity. And um, he's in a relationship. He says he's going on about a year in the relationship. He's moving back to Atlanta for this relationship child. I was like, okay, girl. Um, but it was, it was, it was cool. Shout out to Funky Doniva. I mean, we, you know, you're not going to always, and that's one thing that I kind of, I don't, I don't like that we have to do this, this disclaimer. It's like when you're, saying something about somebody you have to give this disclaimer we don't always agree on everything because i don't know who 100 percent agrees with anybody it's that would be ridiculous if anybody did that so but like we don't always agree i do have critiques of funky doniva and different things i have old vid videos funky doniva saying things that funky doniva said so you can always go back and watch those so we are aware of funky doniva's history past present future and what have you so um armand got wind of what funky daniva said watched it on his channel but then he ended up going off because he was not getting paid what everybody thought he was getting paid he was only getting paid seventy thousand dollars 
when I when he was saying that Foxhole had no access, you have to pay if you want to go down to the red carpet for whatever show. You don't have no you don't have no access. You don't have no clout. Every time I am, I'm assuming that every time Al was down on the red carpet, he paid for himself. That's no. No. So Armand was upset because he was like, Funky Don even had the same critiques he had of Fox Soul and what was going on over there and how it was. Girl and girl, I'm, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. So. Armand was upset. He was naturally upset. And it sounded like based on what he was saying. He said that as soon as he started, um, he didn't get an onboarding of any kind. It was very much so, okay, this is, this is, you're going to be doing this, a contract for six months, $70,000, no connections, no red carpets, no interview, like no doing anything. Like you're not, this is only going to be benefiting you just sitting here. It's not going to be anything outside of that. He said as soon as he started, he started getting text messages not to trust Claudia from Al. Al is a messy bitch. Al is messy. And it sounded like in the it sounded like in the beginning, um, they were using Armand as a pawn in their is Claudia and, and Al all uh, have their issues. And we found out that Claudia don't fuck with Al anymore because Nini said something to him about Claudia and he turned around and said, fuck Claudia. And then Nini took a screenshot and sent it to him. And so he ended up telling Claudia, feeling like maybe it would be released, like to cover himself, to be like, so Claudia says she don't fuck with Al no more. And they've been having tension. And I feel like it, it I feel like it was jealousy, like <clears throat> not jealousy. That's the wrong word. Envious. I feel like Al was envious of, Armand. Armand came on there and was really at first, right, is what they were saying is was at first, the women didn't like him. Um, him and Al had kind of like a banter going back and forth, but Al was calling him boy and boy, you don't know. And kind of like, boy, oh, be quiet, boy and boy and boy, like calling him boy as in a in a dismissive way, as if he's younger and he doesn't know and he's not as experienced. But it does. I mean, he's I mean that you don't get to call somebody boy for that, but he is younger than and then Claudia. Claudia and Al are almost fifty. I think um, Claudia is over fifty years old. I think Armand is barely thirty, maybe thirty-one. I don't even know if he's that old. Um, I don't know how old Armand Wiggins is, but he's not as old as him. He's definitely in a different generation, and I felt like that was a good thing that he was from a different generation. He can ac actually add a different perspective. Um, to the conversation, but um, he said he started getting text messages not to trust Claudia. Um, the going back and forth, he, um, Armand showed text messages of Al saying that Claudia is always going up for women. Why the fuck wouldn't she? When I tell you, Al is a black dick worshiping fucking man. He fucking worships men. He worships men. That's a fucking. When I tell you. And a pick me for for cis het men, yeah. And then he's mad at Claudia because Claudia. Oh, and then and then they were like in their conversations about Claudia. They were like, oh, she she's always bringing up her sexual assault. What? When I tell you, I was like, what? I like the and it's like she's always bringing it back to her 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 essay situation i'm like because you know claudia has been assaulted and she has brought it up and and i remember seeing a clip of her saying um like it was almost like y'all don't understand or i don't feel like y'all or y'all are are listening to me and it like she felt like they were kind of ganging up on her and based on their text messages it was like they were playing off uh, playing off of her but al set a he created a picture before, you know, Armand and Claudia could talk. So he created like a division between them right away. And so he was able to, they were able to go back and forth between Armand and Claudia without Claudia and Armand speaking. And they finally spoke and they hashed it out. They shared what each other said about the other. Um, Claudia didn't like the way Armand was hired. Um, 
she said she didn't really want him there at the beginning just because of the way he was hired, but she thought he was good and she used to watch him because she ended up calling calling the show, um, calling Armand's show. Armand was like, man, fuck that show. Fuck that show. Fuck them people over there. Fuck Fox. So, I mean, he was going off. He was like, man, fuck that. Y'all was y'all had me going through it. And then one of the producers and Al were really cool. Al tried to start a rumor that Armand was fucking a producer. We remember that. We already we had already heard that. Uh, but Al seems like he's just very messy. And it seemed like he fell into like this messy, envious, like I'm just this messy, envious bitch, this young, magnanimous Mercury. And he probably has Libra somewhere too. He is magnanimous. He can talk. He can, he can be friendly. Some people, you know, he, when, when we hear men show up, they are going to have gay or not. They are going to have misogynistic undertones. That's the society that we live in. So I wasn't surprised to hear or see Al and Armand talking about Claudia, the way that they were talking about her, like that's, it doesn't matter that they're gay men. There's, it's, there's under, there's a misogyny that we're all taught. We're all taught to have a latent disdain for the woman, the feminine, all of that. We are, we are taught that you have to unlearn it. Otherwise you'll be having these types of conversations where you're, you're saying a woman's bringing up the fact that she was art. Like if, if the story goes and now I can see if she was bringing it up and it had no correlation to the story but if it has some correlation to the story I can see why she's bringing it up anyway so Armand got mad at Funky Doniva was like fuck you bitch you this and that and you don't even know what the fuck you talking about because to Claudia's point when she called later Funky Doniva is really just going on what Al has been sharing with him Al is his friend and at the end of the day it sounded like Funky Doniva warned because he said um he said well he warned me not to trust you and then claudia was like well why well what do you mean why don't trust nobody y'all all in entertainment why the fuck would anybody trust any of anybody like that's the best advice don't trust nobody but what happened was al ran the interference and 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 laid this thing where we're both black men. We're both gay black men. This woman, like he wanted to have brotherhood and misogyny, but he was also envious of Armand because Armand was coming in and he was changing the tides in the chat. This is according to, I'm just saying what Armand was saying, changing the tides in the chat and the people started to like um, Armand. And then when Armand and Claudia squashed everything, I was like running interference and hoping that they their misogynistic brotherhood gay brotherhood right could hold each other together all all the while al is the snake in the situation telling him not to trust claudia funky don't even told him don't trust anybody and that's the best advice that he could gave him and also he he was proven why right, right don't trust nobody i, I and if i was armand i'm giving uh, Claudia, I'm looking at Claudia sideways. I'm just saying, I'm looking at you sideways because what you didn't like Armand for, did y'all not have a say on who was going to be the new co-host? Y'all didn't have a say in that. They just said, Oh, Armand's going to be it. And then you didn't like it. So, so, um, Claudia didn't like the way Armand came into the situation. Armand was pissed. He was like, Fuck y'all. He was like, fuck fucking Dineva, fuck Foxo. And then Claudia ended up calling him. And he was like, yeah, Funky Dineva said, don't trust you. And, you know, he was like, but that was back in the day. But it was like in conversation about like advice. And it turned out that he didn't, he didn't warn him about Al. Al was the one, it was the main one he should not have trusted. And it, and the way that Armand went off, it sounded like they were like pulling him in both directions. And he's like, oh, I'm new. I'm trying to be cool with the people. I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, he told his mom he didn't want to do it. You should listen to your intuition. He showed, he told his mom he didn't want to do it. His mom was like, well, just do it for the six month contract. He said he was only getting $70,000. Um, and this is why I always say, he said, I can make, I make more money. Same thing as that, Funky Daniva. I make more money on my on my YouTube channel to be dealing with this, to be working every day and to actually, and what's so fucked up about it 
it's fun to talk about these public figures, celebrities and entertainers, but then it's, they, they make it into work and then no longer becomes fun. Right. And I don't understand how they, they were like, they don't know the direction of the show is very aimless over there. It seems like there's no direction. Um, and that is, that's why it was easy to dismantle it. Cause it was like, where was it going anyways? Um, Al would threaten to throw the show, like throwing tantrums. What sign is Al Reynolds? Throwing tantrums and stuff like that. I thought Al Reynolds was a Leo. No, no, no. He just had a birthday. He's a Gemini too. Wait a minute. Because didn't they have... It just says June 1968. We don't know what day. But it was in June because that's when they had the birthday rose. Okay, so they're both Geminis. So I'm trying to figure out why was Al insecure about his segments and delivering his commentary because they said Al would be prepared. He, and, and you did notice that Al would always be like, like have kind of like a backstory about the story, a little bit more details than just commentary, right? To show that I actually read the story and looked into it a little, he would do like a little bit of more research. Right. And it was, it was obvious, but they made it seem like Al came prepared like that because he wasn't secure in his contribution to the conversation, to the commentary. So I don't know. Um, but to me, it felt like just listening to their stories, it felt like Al was a little bit envious of the of Armand's personality, like that drawn in personality where people like you, you young, you know what I'm saying? Instead of, and it and it's and it's sad because instead of like being that black gay, well, I was bisexual, but but black, you know kid, queer kid who can, you know, I'm older, he's younger. Let's you know, like try to know. But I was like, the way that we're connecting is through misogyny against Claudia. Like, don't trust Claudia. She, she'll sue you. You got to be careful what you say. She records all the conversations. I'm like, girl, what? That's the same thing that happened with, um, um, Tasha K and Claudia. They thought they was going to come together on the old anti-gay shit. And then we see Tasha K releasing Claudia's text messages. Like the moral of the story is when you try to get as close as you want to get to the entertainment industry and the entertainment field and the celebrity gossip field, the closer you want to get into those inner circles, the more control people are going to think that they have over you. That's number one. Number two, the more people will look you dead in your face and tell you a fucking lie. When people, they just be talking, understand me? They just be talking. And then they give you contracts that aren't beneficial to you, $70,000? And then y'all nitpicking him, what you got on, why you got on a hat, why you doing this, why you doing that? And then if you are, if you nitpicking, why did you choose him? Why'd you choose him? And then Al, like Armand was pissed. I felt bad for him because earlier when, before he started crying, I was looking at his face. I was like, he looks like he wants to cry. He looks sad in his face. And then he got really mad. And he was like, I am so mad. I'm so mad. He kept saying, I'm pissed right now. And he just started crying. And I don't blame him because I'm not going to take, y'all not going to scapegoat me. Y'all shit was fucked up when I got there. Y'all shit was fucked up. He said they was already in HR investigating Al and the situation with Al before they went on hiatus, before the, before the roast, which is why the roasts happened and why Armand said what he said. And all of us were down here were like, no, Claudia must have been telling him in his ear we all were saying that but god damn it after he explained what he went through his roast was all his it sound like all his experience like what he actually experienced with al in that short amount of time Al was a fucking sound like a goddamn terrorist i just girl stop <laughs> the queen of domestic terrorism down to the fox soul girl so Armand was mad at Funky Doniva. He said, "F Funky Doniva, F Foxo, F all them people." He was really upset. 
And so I felt bad for him. I felt it sounds like Al was over there, an envy little messy queen. That's what it sounded like was going on over there. And and to Carlos and motherfucking Daniva's interview, they were talking about the perception of them being messy gay men, just being messy. And the, how really they not really messy. I don't know about Carlos because going to Mama Joy's trying to get the story on e escape. That's messy, bitch. <laughs> Girl. But Funky Daniva, to, to the example that they gave, Al call and he's like, "You on? I'm on live right now. He could have let Al just keep talking. Al knew he was live because he even said, fuck that. But then he was like, oh, 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 you like you live. Oh, you for real. Yeah, nigga, I'm trying to tell you. Right? Funky Daniva um, said that he, he didn't think they can come back from the roast. Nobody thought that. Like, how do you come back from that? But I guess he said, bitch, I'm about to crash out on this shit. We already, we already are in investigation. I'm about to crash out. So all of that was his experience. I, because we all were down here. We could go back and look at it. We all were down here like, Armand, there's no way that you could have known all this stuff in this short amount of time. It had to come from Claudia. Claudia put you up to this. All of us were down here. No, she did not put him up to it. That was his experience, girl. I was like, God damn. And so when he started crying, I understood why he, because God damn, I'm in here. I'm trying to get in cool, trying to, I, I really don't want to do this. I, I Y'all not going to pay me. Y'all not paying me. Like you pay Funky Daniva. Funky Daniva said he, he didn't rene renegotiate his contract over $250. So it really sound like it was just an aimless production fly by the seat of my pants. They said that really nobody really liked production um, because they are producing their, you are delivering what their vision is. They're producing something and you're just the person, the vessel who's delivering it. So what it's what their vision is. And they were saying like, they didn't really like the producers. One of the producers was cool with Al. She didn't want to reprimand Al or tell Al. I don't know. It just sounded like a fucking mess. And all it does to me is affirm the closer you get to that shit, I'm trying to tell you the best thing is to have your own, your own shit. Like T.S. Madison told Armand, don't ever get rid of your channel. Because when you start working for someone else, you are delivering their vision. So your creativity will be stifled. The fact that they are asking him, why do you have on that hat? Why do you have on these clothes? Our mom would look, every clip that I saw, our mom would look really nice. Like he came on screen looking nice. And, and that might be another reason why Al, because Al was supposed to be the dapper one, honey, coming in with the ascot and shit. No, Armand was, and, and, and he's very, you know, like, you know, drawing, he draws the people in. He just has that factor. I thought he was a good replacement. I thought it was a good replacement. I thought he brought a different perspective for his generation because Al and um, Claudia are Gen X. I think he's a late, millenn like a, um, a young millennial, like a younger millennial. Um, and so he has a different perspective, a different life experience. So he offers a different perspective to the story. Yeah, it might not be as mature as your answer, but nonetheless, that's his that's his experience so far. So I felt like it was good. I can't they 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 just let that show go, which is so like. How much value did it actually hold for them to be like, OK, well, we're just not coming back like, no, you we're just ending your contracts. Are they getting paid to the end of their contracts because you just come off a hiatus and that's it? That's crazy as hell. So anyways, uh, Marcus Jordan was caught on camera sniffing that pata yada yada. Don't fight me. Did you just accuse me? Are you, I have never done drugs a day in my life. Are you kidding me? Cocaine? They caught Marcus Jordan. He's on vacation, honey. That motherfucker says, I'm on vacation. It's summertime, but bitch, I'm skiing, bitch. And at breakfast time, no less, girl. <laughs> I love when we see stuff like that because it's always the people in the comments like, cocaine, I ain't never done drugs in my life. Oh, really? 
<laughs> what? Oh my God, Marcus Jordan is out there sniffing cocaine for breakfast. Girl, he's on vacation. Let him do what the fuck he wants to do. Girl. It's just so funny because it's all out in the open. He's in France, I think. It's all out in the open. It's just so funny, honey. He looks like he's having a good time. He's on the phone, sniffing coke, eating watermelon. I said, okay, girl. Shout out to Marcus Jordan. <laughs> he is on vacation, bitch. Let me see what else is going on. Yeah, that was funny to me. <laughs> it was funny. It's, it's funnier than the people who are clutching their pearls. Um... Krishan Rock, it says, this is her latest mugshot is circulating, Krishan. She's in, um, she's in jail and apparently she's not going to be getting out anytime soon. Hold on. Oh, and also another, another honey, it's been drug bust. It's been a, it's been a hot girl summer girl. Uh, Nelly arrested for ecstasy possession reportedly had four pills on him during the arrest. As soon as you be, I want to tell you what I tell y'all and, and the same thing with uh, Kalani's father, the child's father. I wasn't, I just speaking highly of him two weeks ago. You know, that motherfucker like came back and was like, I wasn't saying that Santeria was a sex cult. Well, nigga, what was you trying to say? Cause that's what it sounded like. It really sounded like that's what you were saying. That, so are you saying that the people girl, anyways, let's get back. Nelly was arrested. Who else? Krishan is in jail. She's going to be in jail for a little while. Um, I can't find. Um, hold on. Let me see if I can find the post with Krishan. Saying that she's going to be. In the clink for a little while longer. I can't find it. So well, let's just move on to Nelly. So Nelly got arrested. Okay, hold on. Let's read the story. It says Nelly was arrested in, in St. Louis um, recently for arrested for ecstasy possession. According to KRCG, Nelly was pulled over in the St. Louis area around 445. That's that four o'clock hour, 445 a.m. and was caught with ecstasy pills. Nelly was also reportedly ha having no, had no driving with no insurance. He was arrested on the scene and taken into custody, but was later released. Wasn't, the, wasn't, what's the name down to the internet the other day? My man, my man, my man, what you doing ecstasy? Cause she's pregnant. Somebody wants to know who, who Nelly was doing ecstasy with. Since his, his wife, right? His wife, since that means so much, his wife is pregnant. So who was you doing ecstasy? <laughs> Y'all wonder why he's smiling all the time, right? The last time I took ecstasy was 10 years ago. I left my wig on the floor at a party. I haven't looked at, I haven't took it since. <laughs> this man has had heroin, cocaine, and pills found on his tour bus throughout the years. And a couple of years ago, he was so high when he performed, people thought he was possessed. And y'all surprised? Am I the only one that remembers all this? He should have swallowed and then what? He should have swallowed it. Not for ecstasy pills. Are you crazy? That's what, um, how was his name died? Juice world. That's how he died. They were getting busted and he, um, swallowed a bunch of pills and had an overdose. So good. So good. So Nelly is out here with co cocaine. I mean, ecstasy. Marcus Jordan's out here with cocaine. The people is partying, honey. They're getting their party on. Okay. I see what's going on. I sponsored the blog. I had saved some stuff. So let me go see what I saved. All right, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay. Update. Kalani and her ex, Javon Young White, set the record straight on hurtful and inaccurate reports about her being in a cult amidst 
amid custody battle. So we know Kalani came out and said that, um, you know, this is untrue. I don't know. Here she goes. Here's what Kalani said. And this is from the shade room. What has been published in the media over the past 24 hours is incredibly hurtful, inaccurate, and inappropriate, and simply untrue. I wanted to take the time to ensure that I responded to these allegations from a calm, considered space rather than a reactive one. I strongly deny any claims that I have put my child in harm's way or left my child alone with anyone deemed dangerous or unsafe. I also do not align with any of the allegations that made against my former religious community that I have that have been stated in the media. I've always taken great care to ensure my child remains protected and safe at all times. My child and my commitment to motherhood have always been my sole driving forces in this life and will remain so. This is who I am and what I've always been focused on. This is a legal, private, familial matter that will be handled accordingly, and I will now be taking space from my own personal well-being and, most importantly, the well-being of my child. Thank you for your support and for respecting our privacy. I will not be commenting further and will let the legal due process take place, Kalani. And then here he comes. They, she, she probably called him and said, nigga, let me tell you something. You better get down there and tell them these motherfuckers ain't. Wh what is wrong with you? I, I know. Because he came back out. Here we go. And said. <sighs> okay. A lot of my friends and mutuals have been speaking from a place of what the public doesn't know. Even my various statements don't really encaps encapsulate my private life and relationships. A lot of it is difficult to stomach and it isn't for the public to digest anymore. Thanks to those who know me, who want, wanted to advocate for me and try to protect my integrity and heart. He says, I never said that I think Santeria is a sex cult. Nor did I say that my daughter is in a sex cult. That's factually incorrect. And I think it's disgusting that TMZ would exploit a child's image like that. Further, I have not been made aware of any court ordered mediation as of writing this per the account of TMZ. Personally, I would love for TMZ to justify to me, the father, how they come to the, up with this narrative. The TMZ article sensationalized aspects of what was said while simultaneously breaching my confidentiality. Further, the filing of my case was incomplete and did not have my authorization by error of, can of counsel. I am no longer represented by the aforementioned counsel. There will be an amended filing soon, which will illustrate a full range of my concern. I do not need to paint an unfair Im image of my co-parent for my justifiable feelings to be respected by the court of law. This unfortunate trauma only increases the obstacles in ensuring my child's well-being. For now, I am hoping to clear the discrepancies made by TMZ. I hope to see a formal retraction and apology. Sincerely, Javon Young White. Let's see what some of the comments say. Here's my comment. I said, I, I quoted him. I never said Santeria was a sex cult. So what was, what was he talking about? was a sex cult so what was the sex cult maybe were those the words that he used he should have said i've never said sex cult i don't know it's not for us anyways the people he named are in the practice does this man not have allegations against him so these people who practice santeria just so happen to also be in a sex cult child he's not going to make it better for himself the baby's protection and well-being are paramount above all else here's waka flocka why y'all women dating these soft era ass niggas? They got all women believing this the new way men act because you were so upstanding and honorable to your wife. Your kind are not husband material. Your kind are not partnering material. Your kind aren't even spades partners, my nigga. Get the fuck out of here. So he was lying, basically. I'm not surprised. People do anything for attention these days. 
they got to that boy and he switched that story her ex i just thought they decided to have a baby together that's why he called he's calling her a co-parent just be quiet maybe let that lady live her life he opened the door to it to this we didn't need to know none of it custody bought battle over before it started next caller he played this would have never happened if i was that baby's father <laughs> I'd sue TMZ. They've been a hot mess for a while. Wiz Khalifa explains the message he's trying to send through his music. Girl. Girl. Okay, let's see what else is on the Jasmine brand. Says it's official. Megan the Stallion's hiss has sold over one million copies in the United States. Another platinum plaque is coming her way. Thanks to Nicki Minaj. That's what somebody put in the comments. Weird. Um, let's see. Lauren Hill admits um, low ticket sales were the reason for the Fuji's canceling their U.S. tour. Yeah, they they were going to go on tour. I, I didn't get excited about it. It was they canceled before the damn even the tour even damn started. Having 10 children by nine different women is getting old, too. Young Jock seemingly agrees that female rappers twerking is getting old. When I tell you men do not like to not have, they do not like when they don't have control over a woman's image. They do not like it. They do not like, even though the girls, their expression of lim liberation However way it looks, sexual liberation, whatever they want to, however they what way it want to look, body autonomy, however way. The men don't like it. If they don't have a say on how you show up, get it out of here. They don't want it. He says, I got to keep it a buck. It just gets old. It looks nice, but it's like somebody's trying to feed you pancakes for breakfast at lunch and dinner every day. Girl, shut up. Okay, this is, we got to go, y'all. So let's see. Oh, this is the last one. It says, Saucy, Saucy Santana calls out women who believe only gay men spread STDs. Let's hear what Saucy Santana has to say. Niggas, um... A bitch is fucking with niggas and niggas in BDL and all that. And they be like, oh, huh. fuck. When it comes to, like, girls and they, like, niggas, um, a bitch is fucking with niggas and niggas in BDL and all that. And they be like, oh, y'all coming back spreading these, these diseases. Do diseases, y'all just draw the line at gay? Because yeah. I know plenty of niggas, straight heterosexual men, I have passed in herpes, chlamydia, gonorrhea, trigonometry, trichomotis, all that shit. Trigonometry. So why, when, every time it comes to a gay or a DL, it's a disease. Like, <laughs> do the bar only stop at gays? Like, that's what gays is the only person pass, passing out diseases around this bitch. Or is, or is I'm tripping. Girls is giving nigga um, chlamydia, herpes, gonorrhea, and some old shit. Niggas is passing it, females is passing it, straight people is passing. I ain't gonna say like when you fucking your straight baby daddy and he come back and he fuck you up, he done went out and fucked a million hoes and your coochie burning. The gay said that. Like when you fucking an nasty ass nigga that don't bag, it's probably got a motherfucker pull back, don't bag is behind the pull back. Bitch, now you fuck you, you yeasty and bacteria infected and all that. Bitch, now your coochie off, bitch. Oh, you got all kind of trick trick trick. Trigger, click, 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 click
Um, even 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 if even if a nigga is bisexual, even if a nigga is down low, how did that just go straight to diseases? Bitch, it's everybody out here passing around diseases. Straight men, straight girls, black men, polka dot men, gay, straight, bisexual, and different. Bitch, get, diseases is not only don't only come from motherfucking gay people. Please stop that motherfucking narrative, bitch. Cause ain't no pussy not clean that pussy. That's clean that pussy, and that's why this always can't always get a nigga out. <laughs> <laughs> ain't nobody scared of these homeless ass niggas, though. These homeless ass niggas, pillar the post ass motherfucking niggas, laid up in your motherfucking bed, breaking your motherfucking bed bugs. Wrap them up, donkey bitch. The niggas go from here to here to find some other motherfucking state. Y'all ain't scared of them, though. They scared of the trans girls. They not scared of them niggas going from pillar to post. They scared of the trans girls. So. <laughs> um, I said, I'll leave this here. Black women make up more than 50% of new cases of HIV from heterosexual contact. Ladies, your sexuality doesn't protect you. Your marital status doesn't protect you, beloved. Stop blaming external sources for your own sexual health. Men lie. Husbands lie. You, can keep bl you can't keep blaming them for lying to you. You cannot keep blaming them for lying to you. You must protect your own body. We just talked about body autonomy. You have, you have to protect your own body. Stop, stop, stop resting on the excuse that men lie to you. Okay. So if they lie to you, protect yourself. We've been talking about this. We've been talking about this and y'all want to blame other people except for yourself and it's familiar to me because there's a group of men who like to blame everybody else for what's going on in their life y'all ain't scared of these niggas going from pillar to post y'all not scared of them y'all scared of everybody else but y'all not scared of these niggas dipping a petri dick into every goddamn fucking hole and then coming back and you're like, that's my husband. So you still have unprotected sex knowing that he's out there fucking around on you. But he's your man and that's my husband. But keep my husband out of it. And so you allow him to stick his old dirty ass dick in you. Put your lips around it all up in your butt and coochie everywhere. Girl. Somebody, oh, make it make sense. Shout out to make it make sense. He says, I think he should be using his platform to educate the community on safe sex practices as opposed to making blanket statements about the stigmas. No, he's not making blanket. I don't think, I don't even think this is a, bla a blanket statement because the women are saying that the men are out there doing whatever they want and they're like, oh, they're, they're just lying to us. You, you, you know, they're lying to you, but yet and still you just lay naked with your greatest threat and just let him just stick it and, 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 and shoot up the club too. No protection, but then want to blame everybody else. Y'all bring him back. What you mean? Bring him back. How was it even brought to you? Why are you having unprotected sex with these weirdos? Why? Why? I don't get it. Uh, straight people only think about getting pregnant. If y'all have unprotected sex, pregnancy is a scare for y'all. I never hear heterosexuals talk about catching STD and STIs. It's always, oh my God, I hope I'm not pregnant. And I hope you're not pregnant. Right. Of course, gay bisexual people are not the only people spreading STDs. Sexually active gay and bisexual men and men who have sex with men. That's a, I'm, I'm, ladies, listen, MSM. Men who have sex with men, those will be the men that you would probably more than likely come in contact with because they say they are not gay, they are not bisexual, they just like having sex with men. So the heterosexual label is no longer a contraceptive for you. Understand that. You, you having a wedding ring is not a contraceptive method to protect your body. Please, the fact that black women are the highest, y'all are the most race loyal. So where are you getting these, these things from, from men that you trust, that you're in relationships with, but do you trust them enough to get a full STI, STD panel from them before you start allowing them and then actually doing one every six months? If you don't trust your husband, if you, it, it, I have seen it with my own eyes, women who say that's my husband. And so you continue to have unprotected sex with him, even though you know he's cheating on you.
50% of black gay males in the U.S. have HIV, and that is a fact. Please research. I said, and 50% of new cases of HIV, of HIV cases come from black women who contracted the virus from a heterosexual relationship. So if 50% of and the at 50% of gay men and 50% of straight women, according to your records, I know my records come from the CDC. I haven't heard of a 50% of gay men having HIV. But I, I know that 50% of the new cases of HIV are black women. So let's do the math. Again, your hetero, your heterosexuality, your st little Miss Strictly Dickly, that is not a contraceptive at all. Being straight is not a contraceptive. So you're going to have to understand that men lie and you know that men lie. And you're going to have to require them to protect themselves. And you, ma'am, might have to find a way for you to get on prep since you cannot put it down. And since you cannot put it down, you should protect yourself. It makes absolutely no sense to lay completely naked with your greatest threat and also allow him to harm your body by way of spreading a virus or an infection or a disease. So I'm back here once again. And not only is Saucy Santana saying it, other people are saying it. Y'all have got to take responsibility. If you can account that these motherfuckers, we're accounting that 50% of HIV, new HIV cases are black women from heterosexual contact. So what, what, is that, what, is that, what does that accounting do? That lets you know that you need to be protecting yourself even in your monogamous relationships. Because like I said, you're monogamous. He's not. He's pansexual and he's non-monogamous and he's polyamorous. So while you sitting over there peeping through the blinds, wondering when he's fucking going to come home, you wait for him to come home and then you still lay with him unprotected because that's your husband. And you don't even know where the fuck he's been for 72 hours. And then when you go to the clinic and wind up, you're like, oh, my God, I trusted my husband. Why the fuck did you trust him? Because he's your husband. Him being your husband is not a contraceptive. <laughs> the ring is not a contraceptive. I'm going to go. But I'm going to get on y'all about this no fault divorce shit. Y'all want to be married so bad. And girl, I, I, I'm going to get I'm going to get on y'all about that. We'll come back to that at a later date because our time is running out. Take care of each other. Protect your energy. Let's get down in the comments. Peace.